life can be so challenging. Where can you go to get divine clarification, help, and advice? Well, may I introduce Natasha Venter, medium coach and direct connection to your guides and angels. Through her podcast, Life Clarifications, Natasha will help you navigate through and create your life's destiny. My name is Kevin McDonald, co-host of this podcast, and I've seen her work and know that through her incredible talent, you can be changed forever. And I am so sorry, guys, and for being human here. I am going to change this right now so that I can be muting and I apologize. That's all right. I did that. I've done that uh, lots and lots of times. It happens. It's, it's, this is the technology that uh, we are on the cutting edge of, of modern technology. And what I mean by that is that, by the way, you're listening to uh, Nat Natasha Venter, and this is Life Clarifications. This is her show, and she's sitting right over there, and she's here for you. Now, this, this particular live broadcast is done on YouTube, and you can call in. It's a live interactive show, and you can call in by calling 206 408 1395 we'll repeat that throughout the course of the show so in case you're not listening yet and you will be soon we'll get that to you so that you can talk to uh, natasha all by yourself and, uh, so just and that that call is good anywhere in the united states or canada so just give us a call at 206-408-1395 natasha how is your wednesday it is going good. I'm just trying to figure out how to make my screen be the full screen <laughs> because live on Zoom is covering it up. So I'm just going to navigate this the best way I can. So it's just going to be what it's going to be. And I that's what I'm, you know, what we work on is trying to do our better. So, you know, life is going to be life and it's just wisdom here <laughs> well, and, uh, I, I really do like that about you because it, there is a you know it's real easy to get all excited and and to uh and when things don't go exactly according to plan but from my perspective everything is perfect and it is the way it is and it shows that we are human and uh we we make mistakes just like everybody else Exactly. And, and especially right now, I'm finding that there's so many people that are having a hard time. Like I was in the grocery store um, and actually it was the day after elections kind of got, uh, I don't want to say said, but you could see the flow was going a certain way. And I'm not going to talk about who, what, where, when, but I'm going to talk about the people. But it was interesting going around. I had like about three different people that felt like they were in everybody else's way. I was like going, oh, hmm, isn't that interesting? They felt like they were in somebody else's way. Well, then that other person was in their way. And I was kind of like going, seeing both sides of that perspective was kind of interesting because, but what I heard was that they were being kind. They were thinking about somebody else. I'm not saying it was because of the election. I was just noticing that the flow of the day was about um, kind of not necessarily thinking about the other, but thinking about the other. And that's kind of where we need to go in the universe is kind of that, you know, yes, I need to stand up for myself and know that, you know, if I'm here, that I need to be in the balance of working with others. You know, and so it's getting into the flow, you know, and if we're going against the stream, sometimes we need to turn around like in the cart. Sometimes if we're flowing against the stream, going up and down the grocery aisles, well, maybe we need to turn around and go with the flow. And so we're not feeling like we're in so many other people's way. At the same time, though, we have to find that fine line between being kind and saying, oh, excuse me, and then going where we want to go with kindness and just, you know, like if we need to go around someone, you know, it's like, oh, wait a minute, now it's my turn, you know, and we're having to do that fine line right now that's such an amazing way to work and, you know, we got to just find the balance of it. It's just, 
you know, we just never know what we can do, where we can go, what's this and what's that. Just kind of like for me, I just found out that my screen was over, you know, where I couldn't get it. And so I just need to grab onto it to move it over. Isn't that what I was just talking about? Uh, exactly. You know, so sometimes we just kind of say, wait a minute. Huh. Now, was I going to get complicated in my screen not working right? Was I going to get complicated in, you know, was I supposed to go right or left or, you know, what was I supposed to do? You know, I kind of waited a minute, took my distraction off of it, just kind of said, look at the camera instead of what I was looking at on my screen. So I didn't get into that politics. And then I kind of heard in myself, which I know I'm intuitive, Yet at the same time, I'm human and we still got to work through things. And I just kind of had that feeling, well, see, grab onto it and pull it over. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't that what I was talking about <laughs> going down the aisle? So that way we have to just see a different perspective. And I love how right now the universe, if we really pay attention, that's exactly what it will show us is how to navigate, how to do things, how to have a, that different perspective that different knowing in ourselves that situation that's happening you know we're just in that alignment with what's perspective. and i love how right now the universe if we really pay attention oh see and then all of a sudden you pop in <laughs> <laughs> where was i i don't know where that ended up happening uh we're just kind of along for the ride but can you see you see you can see me now? I can totally see you. Okay, and good. I've been seeing you. I just had you on a small screen instead of the big screen, kind of like you know when you when you when you two when you have to do things differently. So it's just one of those things that we're just gonna have to go forward and and be where we're at, and you know we just never know what's gonna happen, you know. Uh, so it's just a thing now because you are the um um psychic one one who, who's the medium that talks to the other side i'd like you to put this hat on for a moment because i got a theory that i'd like to discuss with you it is okay it, it is veterans day today and by the way thank you for your service if you served our country we really appreciate you protecting our freedoms and uh, and if if you passed away, you can talk to Natasha, and she can talk to you about about your your sacrifice. Uh, but I wanted to ask you because I found out today. First of all, let me back up because one 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 or one 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 or it has been. I get that number all the time. And I've determined that in my own mind that what that is is the universe saying, remember, we're here. Mm -hmm. This is us. Now, I found out today that World War I, the armistice happened in November of 1918. And so armistice is, is the signing of the peace treaty. That's correct. Yes. And, uh, and that that happened in 1918. We entered the war in 1917, and then we helped make it end quicker in 1918. But what they did, and they did this on purpose, was today was the 11th month, mm -hmm. the 11th day, and it was signed in the 11th hour, which is 111111. Now, what I'm asking you is, was that a sign from the other side that we are watching, we are part of you, and because World War I ended, and up till that point, it was the bloodiest war of all time? Yes, because it was such a physical, and it was bloody because it was hand-to-hand. -hand. You could see yeah. the eyes of the, your other. You can see their soul sometimes in that middle of the of the fear of, the, of I'm going to die. Um and so it wasn't necessary. I mean, it wasn't bloody just in blood. It was bloody in mind. It was bloody in just um, having to deal with that in your own minds. And and so with that, that, uh, you know, we're all in this place where we have to deal with this ick and everything. And that's what, when we see those numbers, 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, um, one 
one, 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 whatever those numbers are. Well, one is about new beginnings and, and 11 is about that connection. So like for me, I see nine, 11 a lot. Well, nine is about endings and 11 is about magical connections. So I'm having endings with magical connections to follow. I'm like, going, that's cool, you know? And so, and how we got 11, 11, 11 on, um, out of 18, 19, right? 18, no, 19, 18. 19, 18. So if we add 19, because you never want a double number. So 19 is nine plus one, which makes 10, right? Right. And then we have 18, which makes nine. Right. And one, so then that, that equals the 10, the, um, because one plus one makes 10, right? So then that's a 10. So we have one. So we have 11, 11, and it was signed on 11, 11 in the time. And then we had the one. So new beginnings. And what I got from that, and I just got that as I was talking to you, which by the way, often happens because you, your, your, your psychic bleed over is what I call it. I just made that up, by the way. Mm -hmm. I kick bleed over is the energy that emits from you. And what I got from that was the universe's way of telling us, all right, kids, we just had the bloodiest war of all time. You now have the ability to start anew. And if you take the right course of action, that you will never see uh, this kind of bloodshed, this kind of war again. Um, if, if you take it seriously and unfortunately, uh, now, first of all, let me ask you, was, was that the intent from the other side? Well, I wouldn't say, cause this is the balance. Sorry, I was making a comment on YouTube that, um, to make, if somebody wants to make a comment or, or anything, please, please do, or call in that when, the universe is always here to help us, no matter what our belief system is. We all have angels. We all have guides. We all have um, a structure around us of past lives, um, future lives, whatever we're going to be. We always have that, no matter what our belief system is. I've witnessed this from atheists to um, different religions, that we all have the same helpers because they're not religious based. Religion has been made all here on earth. And so religion has helped many people be spiritual. So the helpers of us are spiritual beings helping us have spiritual life. There's no religion based on it besides love. So whatever religion that you believe in, if it has love, and even if you are in a religion that doesn't have love, you still have these helpers that are trying to help you do better. And it's our mental brains and what we believe in that either alter that or shift that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, and I'm gonna walk delicately here because you know there you can go into the conspiracy theory, you can go into many different belief systems here about who's really making decisions. I don't wanna go there. Uh, that we all have this, sometimes things happen where conflict is going to in, interrupt or, or in, engage because we're human. We have different perspectives. We do have different understandings. We have different um, belief systems. So conflict is always going to arise. It's always going to arise. It's always going to be there. What the angels and guides help us to see is a different perspective. Yes, it's to have conflict. That's how we stir things up to make the greater good. Sometimes you have to stir the pot in the stew to get the seasonings together. But sometimes the stew is happy just sitting there and it doesn't want to get stirred, you know. And so with that, the, the, and that's where it kind of goes bubble, 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 bubble when it gets stirred more than, than, than when you, it's just sitting there. But we got to remember, though, that we're human. And, and, the only, and one reason why we're here is to learn how to have a more peaceful perspective. And peaceful means in our minds. 
And so when we have conflict, if we can just take the opportunity to say, what is that other person's perspective? What are they trying to show me? Can I step a toe into that perspective to get a little bit of learning? It doesn't mean that I have to believe what they believe. It doesn't mean that I have to understand that. But yet at the same time, it's like, oh, okay, I see that different perspective. So then I can kind of go, hmm, okay, I can, I can get empathy here. I can get sympathy here. I can get a, a greater picture knowing, okay, I'll give you that. You know, and if we can get to there, we won't have the bloodiness. But many of us can't stop there. They have to go on to prove that they're right. Well, the angels and our guides and the greater power of, of love doesn't want us to have that conflict, you know, to where it's blood and everything. Sometimes that's our um, kind of like World War II kind of happened because we were in a depression. And so, you know, that's where the, the certain leaders came in. That's where, you know, there's decisions being made that if, if, we, uh, if we make a job for someone, people are going to get fed, you know. And yes, that's an old belief system. But yet it's still a belief system that's still going on that conflict usually does cause a problem so that the problem needs to get fixed, which means then the fixing makes jobs or makes scenarios happen. And so we go forward. But when you have something like 11, 11, 11, 1, how many 11s did I put in there? Um, <laughs> At least six. There could be more. <laughs> but today is 11 11 you know and then we got 20 and 20 which makes 22 when you drop the zeros so 22 is a greater number than 11 11 so right now today we're walking in the day of 11 11 and then so you know november 11th the 11th day and the 22 22nd year if you add up 20 plus 20 which makes 22 okay well, actually it makes four doesn't it it does make four eventually um when you get it when you get it down when you get it down that but when you get it down but if you take drop the two zeros and so you can have that magic if you so believe but now let me let me let me go down this road just a little bit because what you just said is actually what in fact happened because after world war one they signed the armistice now in the armistice was a peace treaty and the peace treaty basically stripped germany being the losing side of mm -hmm. all their rights all their dignity they couldn't have a, a a military anymore and threw germany into a major depression mm -hmm. they also developed something called the league of nations which eventually became the United Nations. Uh, but the League of Nations, which Woodrow Wilson started, failed miserably because he couldn't get everybody to agree on anything. So you go back from, you go forward from 18 to the early mid 30s in Germany, they were a very unhappy people because they had been basically stepped on and yes. so forth, which is- Stripped of their, their um, dignity, almost stripped of their humanness. Yes. And which brought forth Adolf Hitler. Yes. And which led directly to World War II because when we when they they had a clear they had a clear choice at the end of World War One. Do we let it go and then work together for the betterment of humanity, or are we going to hold these people accountable and 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 be the victor? And you're the loser, so you don't get anything. Yeah. And that's the, led directly to, and that's that's what the universe is trying to tell. I get it now. The universe is trying to tell us, be kind to everyone. The war's over. It doesn't matter who wins or loses. No, it's about, um, and sometimes it does matter who wins or loses, but it's losing with kindness. Right. Well, in it's that losing case with kindness. And, and I, and, you know, I, um, when I was in school, I did a lot of history. For some reason, I was very, I did a lot of reports. There we go. Get the right language here. That I did a lot of reports on the Hiroshima bomb. Mm. And the Narasaki bomb. And I'm not saying, I'm sorry for the language there. 
uh, not saying those names right. Um, that, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nagasaki. That um, the one thing, though, that I have an understanding when we signed that peace treaty, that they, our government didn't strip them as bad. No, we rebuilt them. We, we, we helped rebuild them. And so if we learned anything through what World War II taught us, because the writing was on the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, know, we, we, you know, the writing was on the wall. U.S. was not nice. But if we really look at what the U.S. means, it's us. Which means us as a, as a country and us as a world. We are us. How can we be kinder with us? It's hard enough to be kind with the people that were are living in our same house. <laughs> That's why you I know? Do and we're going back into where the universe, in my perception, and I'm not going conspiracy theory here. I'm not going government here, but I always kind of work with what's right in front of me. Well, governments are shutting down again. You know, uh, cities are kind of having to shut down again because you know, we're not thinking of the us right? as, as a whole government. And like it was given, it was perspective to me, given to me today about how, like even the swine flu took two years to get through it. Mm -hmm. And it didn't have anything to do with who's in office. It had everything to do with the person who we were living with or the one we were looking in the mirror with, or the one that, that we had to be partners in walking in an office with, you know, that, that it's about treating us kindly. You know, like I was picking up a table today and she said, are you a mask person? I said, I'm, I'm going to wear a mask just because I want to care about you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I guess I want to care about me, but I was caring about my other and, Judgment or no judgment, you know, it's not for me to say wear a mask or not. I know, you know, I personally can't care about that because otherwise I'm getting into politics and I'm into, I'm going to choose to wear a mask just because I care about you, the other. Well, see, the and that's, that's one of the negative things that has happened is that, that wearing a mask has become politicized. It is not. It is a health care thing. It is a, we talked about this on the show I did uh, yesterday. Uh, no, on Monday. And time goes so fast. I know. Uh, I'm flipped around too. And time is changing, by the way, guys. I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Time is changing. So if you're feeling off or if things are just, you're, it's hard to look at the clock and be on time or something, we're going through a major upgrade, downloads, um, universal energetic something shift to where our time is changing. So, so just, there, so there, just, you know, so you're, you're not say, feeling weird. It, it, it's called reality. <laughs> when you're saying time is changing, how, how is it changing? Is it going faster? Is it going slow? What, what, what is, what is happening with our time? By the way, while she's thinking about that answer, if you want to give us a call at 206-408, 1395 you can and talk to natasha about anything you'd like it's it's kind of a wide open forum today so again 206 408 1395 and if you're listening to this show other than four o'clock uh pacific time on wednesdays you, those phone numbers are not active but that means that what you need to do is to get on here at four o'clock pacific on mm -hmm. wednesdays and you can call in because it's a live show and call in and talk to natasha i'm sorry so what is happening with our time you tell me well it's called getting to a more universal time we didn't always have this clock time the mayans didn't have a clock time they had a they had a a, a I want to call it a calendar time, a sun time. They had a moon time. They had um, a star time. They had, oh, I feel like it's time to get going because it's so long after sunrise. So I know that I, I have this timing that, that, that things happen so long after sunrise for me to go to where I need to go and do what I need to do. 
and so we're starting to get into that that flow of of universal timing it's kind of like me picking up my uh table today that i had that feeling oh time for me to walk out the door well i got there um early and i was just ready to messenger and she says oh i'm on the other side of the truck so she was there early so with us going that universal time we were actually able to hook up easier than if we like oh i have to leave at night you know be there by 1 30 you know what i mean it's like we get caught up in the politics instead of saying oh hmm this feels right but then we have to honor you know like doctor's offices and and things like that that have to run on a schedule that we have to do things in a universal way you just fell over i yeah <laughs> take your t- take your time. Go ahead and put it back up, and, and we'll get it. There we go. We'll I'm having one more. of those days where you know, like I, uh, I I've been talking to my kid yesterday. It's like feel like I'm on a hamster wheel. Sure. But you know, when a hamster starts spinning, usually they go fling and they go flying off, or they go or they go somewhere else. That's you know how fun. hamsters they get going so fast. I'm just telling myself. I want to be in a good rhythm on the hamster, hamster wheel. Because I can go on a hamster wheel, but yet I don't want to go fling. <laughs> and that's what's been happening if we don't stay attuned to the energies of what's happening. Exactly. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that you, you're, you're much busier than I, uh, because you've got so many things and you've got a household to run and, and all of that. So you do have to schedule yourself. Uh, and I hope that you schedule, and this is for everybody. I hope you schedule enough me time, uh, enough downtime where you can just relax and, uh, be who you are. Yes. And I, and I really do because it's, it's part of that, um, grace, that if I'm not healthy, then I can't do what I'm, what I'm called to do. If I'm not mental healthy, healthy, (laughs) then I'm not going to find that I can do better here. And I know for me being the dyslexic that I am, that a lot of times I start getting into that um, feeling of, of, I don't want to call it fuzziness, but chaoticness in my own brain. And, and that's where I have to say to myself, nope, I'm free. I'm good. I'm just going to st- stand here and just breathe for a minute. Mm-hmm. And and breathing can be a very, very good exercise for you. Oh, I do. I, I, whenever I'm like, I breathe before I get out of the car to go to work. I breathe when I am taking off my coat. I breathe when I'm getting in my car after a certain situation. I, I kind of do something to breathe, you know, just in any moment that I can. Like when I'm in school, sometimes I have to leave one energy of a classroom and walk into another energy of a classroom. Well, a lot of times I walk out of that classroom and I just kind of stand there for, even if it's just 20 seconds. And then I move on. So you notice that, because I know you work in an elementary school. Mm-hmm. And you notice the difference in energy from one classroom to another. Oh, there's no doubt. <laughs> now, is, that, is that caused by the teacher in the room? Is it caused by the mix of kids? How, what, what is the difference in those energies? Uh, it, it's all in the basket. And it's, and it's sometimes there's classrooms that are, that all the personalities are in the basket and they're all sitting there nicely and we're good. And then there's sometimes where you might as well just take the basket and go spin, 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 because that's what's in the classroom. Uh, You know, it's just the difference. You know, you got a difference between a third grade classroom and a kindergarten classroom. You know, there's just, it's just different energy. And then you get the different personalities, you know, in there. And we all know that you know, when we're living in a house full of children and and adults that not everybody flows the best at at the same time. And, and, you know, we're just going to have to just sometimes take a moment and breathe. And I know a lot of moms, they they try to go into the bathroom by themselves and they can't even do that because if they don't have the kids, they have the pets, you know, it's just one of those things that, that things just happen. And, 
But at the same time, though, that a lot of times those happen so that we can learn boundaries. You know, there's sometimes where my dog runs in and I'm like going, nope. And I shut the door and I brush her out and I shut the door and I have my, my moment. Like, and for one, my animals are not allowed in my bedroom, you know, because that's really? my time. Uh, some people need that time. I know my girlfriend who has sleep apnea, she sleeps with her dog because she's, the dog saves her life. So there's nothing wrong or right. But at the same time, though, if you can't have it one place, you got to find it another place to have that balance, that grace, that breath. How do you recommend that people, and I'll give you an example. I'm going to be doing a show um, on Martha Norwalk's Animal World about bus drivers. And one of the things that I that I want to get out of that show is a uh, a way for bus drivers to deal more effectively with stress because ah. they've, got, they've got a lot of stress that they deal with every day, as we all do. But mm -hmm. this is this is stress imposed from the outside that you might not know is coming, and then all of a sudden it's there. And how do you? And I may use you as an example, and may even drag you onto the show. But how do you? <laughs> effectively deal with stress to keep your stress level down because I've had three three bus drivers that I know uh, well have died of heart attacks in the last three months um, and it has to do with it has to do with the stress mm -hmm. um, of the job and everything how do you and this is for everybody who deals in and we all deal with stress but yes uh, but how do you how do you handle it? How do you work through it so that you can, do you get your little Zen garden out and start going with your little Zen garden thing or what, what do you do? <laughs> when, and I can use the example of uh, working in the elementary school system where I was in a classroom where we had three or four kindergartners who had the opinion that they could do whatever they wanted. So if they want to draw walls, if they want to run up and down the hallway, if they wanted to, that, that there's those times where we just got to say, I'm going to stop and breathe. Now you can be driving and you can just say, I'm breathing. It's just making a conscious decision. Uh, another thing that I do is like, when I know, because I'm picturing being a bus driver right now, that I'm seeing somebody come on and I know that person and their energy. And I used to do this because I used to cut hair too. So I, and I used to work in a, um, I used to do um, lunchroom duty. So there'd be a hundred and some odd um, fifth and sixth graders, fourth, fifth and sixth graders in the classroom or in the lunchroom. And I was the only adult basically taking care of them. So with that, that I've had different, ideas of when things have happened. No, I've not been a bus driver in this lifetime, but I can say that I've ridden the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of time in, in a major city. I've actually had problems with somebody bugging me on the bus several times. So oh, I, yeah. I know how um, those scenarios can happen. I've seen bad things happen on the bus. Uh, and so I, I'm going there with this knowledge that when you see someone coming on to the bus, you, uh, you put up a boundary. And this is where I use this mantra. What's yours is yours. What's mine is mine. What surrounds me is a thick, heavy bubble <laughs> of love, color, whatever you want, angel hugs, you know, higher power love, whatever you can whatever you can do around you okay so then you know that whatever's coming for them with them is bouncing off of you now when i used to shampoo people and i knew that they had a bad day i would put up a mirror but it was a mirror that reflect whatever they were whatever they were shampooing because you know i'm shampooing like this so they're right here within a short distance because I got short arms uh, <laughs> that, you know, I would put up a mirror and whatever they were, they were sending out was reverberated back love. Ah. So it's almost like breath in breath out, but I didn't breathe in. 
So it's motion towards, motion away, motion towards, motion away. But you see, it doesn't come to me, right? Right. And so with that, that you just kind of get that image of just saying, and let it walk by. Or like when I'm sitting in a, um, in a, uh, auditorium where I have somebody sitting next to me, I kind of ask their energy, their aura to kind of cuddly hug them. <laughs> and then I ask mine because if it's bugging me, I might be bugging them. I ask mine to nicely cuddle around me. And I've done that sitting on the bus when somebody was like, mm -hmm, energy, I would kind of go, you, you, you know, oh, and so with that, but then when that person leaves, when that person leaves, we got to remember to let him go. And a lot of people don't let him go. Let them go. Let it go. Let whatever that is go. And so that's when they you see that person walk off. You go. And no, you send right. them on their way with love. No, nope, you're right. Because oftentimes what happens in, when you're on a bus and you're on a bus for eight, nine, ten hours. And uh, people come, people go, and occasionally they'll be the type of person that, for whatever reason, uh, you your energy doesn't mess with theirs, and there's a confrontation or there's there's an argument or whatever. And then they get off. We tend to hold that. Yes. And then that affects the rest of your day, and it only gets worse. I've been I've been driving a bus, and I've been in a bad mood, and I can tell that my bad moodness. And the mm -hmm. energy around that was affecting the energy of the entire bus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I changed that from being negative to being positive, it also has the exact same change in reverse. So yes. it can it can be it can be a, a much better idea and a better, much better thing. And I'm not going to say that if somebody's having a bad day and you're going, "Hi, how are you?" Like for me. At school, I had to learn not to say good morning. Not every student had a good morning. That's true. So I had to say morning. Glad yeah. you're here. That, and then you know? you, that is a much better because, especially in your world with uh, kids, that they're at that age, they are not in control of much. And they're, no. They're, and they're, a lot of homes are lovingly said dysfunctional. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't want to call a house and it, there's really no house that is functional. So, but there's, there's different levels of dysfunction and some of them are pretty hellish. I'm well, just going to say. My former wife did what you do and uh, she worked at an elementary school, which was three blocks away from the Kent Justice Center. <laughs> And so she, because that elementary school was so close to the justice center, uh, there were lots and lots of apartments of people the, who half of them were in the justice center and they had moved there so they could be a little bit closer. But the dysfunctionality of those poor children, well, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. Yes. So I'm, I'm really glad that there are people like you who can have a positive outlook and can help these kids realize that not every adult is an idiot. Just so. No, no. And that's, that's, that's one thing that my wish is. And that's one reason why I stay in the school system is because there's, there's these times where I'm just called to be my light. And I am there to be one of the warriors for the greater good. Now, one thing that I want to add to this is though, is, is that if we can remember, like, I'm going to go back to the bus because the bus is a perfect example of a day. How many times do we walk through the day and different interactions that we have is kind of like people getting on and off the bus yeah. of our life. Okay. So we're going to take the metaphor of the, of a bus and our life is the bus, you know, we got to get up in the morning. So there's the morning people on the bus, you know, our co our, our loved ones, our family, and then we go to work and then the, the kids get off. But then, you know, <laughs> you know, it just depends on what our day is like. And, but at the, the end of the shift, Kind of like for me, sometimes when I'm done with school, I sit in the car, in there and I do some cleansing techniques. So that could be ringing a bell, 
And I'm just going to do this real quick because it's right. There's one right here. I was going to ask you if you had a bell that you could mess with. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. So what I do is I just, and sorry if this tone bothers people, I just ring it around and I ring it. And I remember my back because a lot of us carry things on our back. And I kind of just ring it just to change the energy. If we don't have a bell, we'll clap. And that changes the energy. And sometimes when I'm in the bathroom and I know the bathroom's all by myself halfway through the, and I'm in there by myself, you know, if it's a public bathroom and I know I'm there by myself, I'll do that real quick. Especially if I've been around sticky energy. You know, because I don't want to, I am free. I'm changing my words because I don't want, doesn't help. I am free from carrying other people's with me. Other people's what? <laughs> exactly. You mean, you, you mean other people's less than desirable attitudes and traits? Exactly. <laughs> or, or f f to put it in short terms, other people's shit. <laughs> yeah, so with that. that and Nathan from um, our radio station doesn't have our buzzer, so he can't buzz exactly. us. So with that, the, you know, but it's our responsibility to decide, are we going to take that on? Because their stuff is their stuff. And right now, we're in a dilemma where a lot of us are stuck in our houses with many of our loved ones. And we really cannot get away. And sometimes they're, they're a little bit less than loved ones when you can't get away from, you know, uh, some folks, which, you know, and I get, I get it. It's, it's, it's a problem. If, you, if you're stuck in the house all the time and you're both trying to work from home and trying to, it's, it's tough. And then have the kids, you know, going to school and it, it's just, it's a whirlwind. But we got, please, please, please remember you. Remember thyself. That it's healthy to say, I need a minute. I need a minute. And I know for me, in the craziness of taking care of my mom with young ones, husband having, you know, my life, and I was on the hamster wheel getting flung around. I'll be, I'll be honest, I had less tools then. But there was times where I just would go outside and just breathe. Now, I didn't smoke. I didn't do any of that. So I didn't have that to have that as an excuse to go out and breathe. And I know a lot of people have an addiction like that to have the reason to go outside <laughs> to get sanity. Well, many a times we don't need those addictions to say, I need to go outside to get sanity. And especially when we're in the middle of a conflict, it's okay to say, I, you know, I'm, we're going, we're going down the slippery slope and I don't want to go there with you. You know, I don't want to say something that I'm not going to be able to take back. So can I just take a minute to get my breath? See, and the other thing about you, you're very expressive. You're very expressive with your eyes and with <laughs> your facial expressions. And yes, I, I, I don't can, lie. <laughs> I, I can just see the time when you have had enough. <laughs> I have had enough of this and you don't even have to say anything and all and then i would look at you and if <laughs> i were your significant other i would look at you and say oh, i'm going outside <laughs> love you see ya <laughs> I'd, because, so. yeah um i i can say that i'm living with a man that um uh, my significant other that uh he learned early i'm not a fighter I'm not a screamer. I'm not a yeller. I'm not a thrower. I'm not, I'm not reactive that way. Uh, and so actually I had to learn boundaries because I got walked on a lot of times because I didn't have yeah. a voice. Um, and so now I'm learning a different type of voice. because I'm still not a screamer or a yeller, but my energy has a voice just as well as my voice does. So I've learned how to have different kinds of energy and, uh, and boundaries. And so it, it's helped me because even the people that I work with know when I'm stirring very deeply. <laughs> and there's not been very many times I've gotten angry and, and they kind of go, oh, 
Oh, Natasha. Yeah, I, I can see why she's angry. And and usually I only get angry when it is um, about uh, a common sense, kind of like kids out in the rain needing to get undercover or, you know, we need to have child safety or, um, you know, that was not my intent. Don't tell me it was my intention to do wrong. You know, it's those morals and values, the higher, greater good <laughs> that I that I fight with. Well, but those are the sorts of things that, that you have to take pride in, that that you are who you are. And, and when somebody questions your intentions or questions your validity or or those those things, it, it's it, it is hard to. Uh, to rectify those things. And it's especially since, you know, like, like talking about being a bus driver versus being working in an elementary school with a bunch of teachers and stuff, some of which you might like, some of which you might not like, some of which you, you understand, some of which you don't understand you and stuff like that. And you have to go back there day to day to day to day to day and deal with the same folks every day. As a bus driver, people come and go and you don't have to deal with that. You do yeah. much, much more short term. But if you have a run in with somebody in September and they're going to be there until um, June, uh, you're gonna have to figure out how to how to deal with that, huh? Yes, and that's that's the scenario that's going on is is that uh, we always have someone in our lives. Yes. That, you are you getting a call or something? Um, theoretically. <laughs> you know, we always have somebody in our lives that's gonna turn us upside down. Nope. You know, just like uh, I have that there's many people in my lives that I have good boundaries with, but there for a long time, I had my mother of heart because my mother had passed. My mother of heart is a woman who came into my life for about 20 years after my mom passed. And so she kind of took on the role of mother for me. She was my elder and my husband that I thought I had my footing. I thought I had good boundaries and then they would do something and my feet would fall out from underneath me and I go, crap. They undermined me again and I'm walking into their traps. <laughs> Those are always fun traps to walk into. They always are fun traps. And then if they were sliding down the slippery slope of O's oh, me's, well, they took me right with them. And I got better though. I got better. And there's been times where I said to my mother of heart and to my husband, I got to stop this conversation now. I just got to, and I'm sorry. I love you. I'm not going to hang up on you, but I have to stop this exact. Well, I don't mind talking about something else with you, but this exact conversation, I'm going to have to stop right now because I'm not going to go down this slippery slope with you. I didn't say that, but I just said, I need to stop. This is not going where I want to go with this. And I got better at that because I practiced because I would notice after the phone call or the talk, oh, shoot, I got went down it. And then I noticed during the phone call. And then I noticed at the beginning of the conversation. And then I noticed, oh, wait a minute, I see it coming now. <laughs> so so how does, that, how does that exactly work? Because I've always wanted to do that, but I never have had the intestinal fortitude to be able to say, you know, I'm going to hang up now because this conversation isn't going well at all. And how, how, how did that play out? Because after, after you would hang out or hang up and then the, the person. See, I, didn't want, I wouldn't hang up though. Cause to me, that was um, just uh, disheartening. I wouldn't want to be hung up after I was having an emotion and I didn't realize that I was affecting someone else. So, so were you able to get them to stop talking about what it was that they were animated about and go on to something else? I would repeat it. I'm sorry. We're oh, still there. I got to stop. That make me so mad. Um, <laughs> I'm so mad. And, and like I said, I'm not one that, that's, I'm not one that gets angry very often. So, I, I mean, it's like, and I had to learn to get angry. But I would, I got better at it, and I would say, I would say it in a tone that was like, "We need to stop this now. It's not going where this is not. Let, let's talk about something else." And I would give that opportunity a chance to change. 
now at what point would you go back to that conversation? Because if you, if you stop that conversation and, and say, we can talk about something else, but th that conversation wasn't done. So at one point you would still need to go back and do that conversation, wouldn't you? Well, it depends because sometimes that conversation was just an emotion that was, was spewing out over onto me. Or, or perhaps alcohol or something along those lines. Or, you know, sometimes somebody was just feeling really, you know, crappy about something and they were just spewing and they decided to make it about me or make it about them or make it about something that I just didn't want to hear. You know, I, I'm not one that wants to hear somebody go, well, this person, nah, 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 and this person, nah, nah. I don't mind saying, you know, this person really did something that bugged me and it really hurt. But when they're starting to go on the, I, I just kind of got to say that I'm willing to hear that you're frustrated. I'm willing to hear that you're sad, but I don't want to hear the, there's a difference between politics and emotion. So let's talk about the emotion. Right now, I'm very hurt about this conversation we had, you know? So a lot of times I didn't have to go back to that conversation because it was about emotion. And then sometimes I just would say, you know, after that, after we start talking about something else, that conversation would come around again. But since a person wasn't in the spinning of it, they were able to manage it differently. Okay. I get it. I think. You know, and so there's just those moments where, you know, doing our better good of saying that, and if you notice this whole conversation about is who's been on our bus for through our day and who do we keep carrying, you know, because those kinds of conversations, those kinds of moments, they undermine us. Yes, they may make the other person feel better, but we feel crappy. So let's just talk about how you're sad and disappointed more about making me feel that, like I'm the ugly one in emotions and, and whatever. And, and so that's where we have to kind of put up those boundaries. And then when we're done, shake it off. You know, a dog, when they're done with a stressful moment, they shake. There's something realistic about that. And then they go do something else. You know, it's like do something to get rid of what we carry. Because other people's stuff is not our stuff. But we take it as our stuff because... We take it as our stuff. Because we all want more stuff. <laughs> I got enough stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, that's the thing is, is that, you know, taking that breath when we come out of a situation, before we go into another conversation... Clapping our hands, ringing our bells. Like the other time, the other day, you know, there was something that happened and I drummed. I have a drum that I have, um, Native American drum. And I drum that around sometimes just to shake up the energy. That's where smudging helps. That's where, um, you know, there's just different things. Or just saying, um, like there, there's these times where I, um, I act like there's a rainbow that comes down from the greater good of love around me and through me and then all of a sudden it's almost like sneezing when you plug your nose and you sneeze and your ears go Pfft. i hate that well i do that though i almost act like it comes down and then i go Poof. and i just kind of have that whole energy go Poof, out of me you know so there's there's these different ways showering at the end of the day just saying i'm cleansed from everything and let it go down the drain and let mother earth take care of it for me you know, finding those releases so that we don't keep taking on what other people are living. You know, a lot of us are carrying Mother Earth right now. You know, Mother Earth is, she's been around here a whole lot longer than we have. You know, a lot of us are carrying the people of politics. You know, and we need to let politics take care of itself. Yes, I can care. I voted. I made choices. I had prayer, I, I made wishes, I see the greater good, I tried it and I asked for the greater good, may the greater good happen. And then I asked for healing on this. <laughs> I use that mantra a lot. I'm asking for healing on this. You know, a lot of us are carrying the Black Lives Matter process. 
you know, carry love for it, carry shifting of it, asking for healing of it is different than saying, oh, it's hurting me, it's hurting me. Well, that's when our bodies hurt. And a lot of women who have breast cancer or uterus cancer, we have to really look at how much we carry other people's stuff because we're woman. Man ends up having a lot of heart attacks or prostate problems because they don't know how to be man in a good way to not take on other people's stuff. And when something goes against our values and our morals, and we can't see why is that person making those choices and it really bugs us, we have to check in. Okay, am I responsible for that person making those choices even though it bugs me? Nope, you're not. And you can't, and you can't hold it because oftentimes when something bugs us about somebody else, it bothers us a lot more than it bothers them. Mm -hmm. They don't particularly care. And nope. so if they don't care and you care, it's, it's, you, you're, you're just going to drive yourself absolutely crazy. And, and it's not healthy. You're mm -hmm. not going to be healthy. And like, what we tell kids a lot of times, it's like, just say, Oh, well, Oh, well. And, and if we notice when we say that and we just kind of do the motion, Oh, well, what happens to us? It kind of, go, it kind of goes, ah, naturally. You know, it doesn't mean that we have to stop caring. It doesn't mean that we have to stop being passionate about something. But what it is is decide, is it your passion or if it's somebody else's passion? If it's your worry or is it for somebody else's worry? And, and really decide what is ours. And 1111 is about us and the community. One is about I, the healthy I. And the 11 is about how can our team, our community work with us. Because we're all one. We're all one. And I have learned that, and this is what I learned as my husband became more healthy, that in order to have a strong roof for our home, he had to be a strong pedestal. I had to be a strong pedestal. If I was leaning over and caring more about him, what was happening to our roof? It was falling down. It was falling down. So I had to be a strong pedestal myself. When I'm going in and doing my other work in the school, if I'm caring more about others and not myself, what's going to happen about the balance? Because if I'm holding up a strong roof, that means I'm caring about others because I'm caring. I'm caring about others. I do care about being in the grocery store and moving out of my way if somebody needs to get the lettuce that I'm in front of. No, it's my I'm lettuce. I'm getting Anna. lettuce too. I'll say, I'll be done in a minute. And I get my lettuce quickly and I move on. It's about caring about, but I had to caring about me at the same time about others. The pedestals carrying the strong roof. Exactly, exactly. Let's get back to where we started with this, which is this is Life Clarifications with N Natasha. Natasha, <laughs> whatever your name is, Natasha. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and, and we are, uh, and uh, this is a show that we are doing, and we're doing it every Wednesday at 4 o'clock Pacific. And it's live, so you can call in and talk to Natasha. And uh, when they call in live, they can talk about virtually anything. If you've got a uh, uh, someone who's passed, you can talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. If you if you they've got uh, a life, um, they've got a fork in the road, and they're not quite sure how to handle it, you can talk to them about that. If they've got a personal issue uh, that you want to share with us and the entire world, you can do that too. So um, you can talk to Natasha, and if they want to get a hold of you, my friend, how do they do that? You can reach me at my website, which is angelicclarifications.com. Make sure there's an S at the end. 
and Clara, or Angel Angelic, and Clarifications has two C's. So angelicclarifications.com or Natasha at angelicclarifications.com is my email. So oh, very, very it's good. easy to get a hold of me. And right now, because of what we're going through, I do have a small spe special going on with my sessions. Uh, I'm not going to quote that, but I just want you to know that I'm here to help us walk through how can we do this better? How can we negotiate this better? How can we? And it's not perfect. Do you notice I didn't use the word perfect? It's about doing this better because when we can do it better and take care of us, then we can walk forward easier in our lives and our bodies. <laughs> the temple of our bodies, we only have this one body to walk through this lifetime with once. Yes, we can get replacement parts, you know, knees, elbows. I have those. You know, we can get those replacement parts. But at the same time, if we notice that our knees ache sometimes because we're having a hard time walking forward. And knees are about walking forward. Knees are about stability in that flexibility of moving forward. Our hips are about supporting us as a structure of us. You know, the pivoting. Our hips are about pivoting, moving forward, having perspectives. Our backs are about, you know, how much are we carrying other people on our shoulders? How much are we carrying people in our lower back? Our heart aches because some of us are working with our heart chakra and we don't know how to balance the love for others and the love for ourselves because we're loving others more than we're loving ourselves you know our we get um throat throat aches because either we're speaking too much or we're not speaking enough we get nasal problems or ear problems because we're not hearing maybe the better that we can you know that we're not having that grace of i understand what you're saying do you understand what i'm saying you know, there's that ears. We get headaches because we're we're closed off with our upper chakras because we're not willing to listen to what the universe is trying to tell us. Our third eye is all clogged up, so sometimes we have eye problems or or headaches in this area because our third eye is so clogged up that we're not seeing the visions of what the universe is trying to show us. You know, there's many. You know, toes are about balance. Are we balancing our lives well? You know. There's there's things about our bodies that are trying to tell us, you know, like the pancreas is about um, processing emotions. Uh, the liver is about flow, letting things flush through us. There's many times when I'm going through a, a stressful moment or a stressful day, and the next time I go to the bathroom, I flush that out. I allow that to flush, but I also drink a lot of water to let it flush. You That's know, more information than I really needed. At the, at the moment. But the, but the, those are those things. I get it. Yep, you're right. Those are those things that people don't understand. Like you're saying, the bus drivers carry it. Well, these are ways to release it. Showers, bathrooms, you know, just um, ringing bells, clapping, breathing, just saying yours is yours, mine is mine, what stands between me and you. Or putting like a, a I want to call it a mirror. What is reflecting in can be reflected back love. And when we're doing that, remember 360, our backsides. Sometimes we just do boundaries in the front. We got to remember boundaries in the back. On a bus, who's in the back of us? People. People. So what are we carrying? Our backpacks. So how many backpacks, emotional backpacks, are we carrying for others? We got to take off those backpacks and give them back to the people. You know, there's there's those metaphorical things that we can do to image what we need to do to help us do that. And I can tell you that Archangel Michael, <laughs> the being that he is, the love that he is, he says all the time, my dears, give me your, your baggage and I'll take it from you. So I kind of have this like box. I call it a Michael box. And... It's open and I throw everything in, all the crumb and stuff that I wanted to do, all the expectations I had and I didn't get them, all those different things that I wanted and I didn't get, I put them in the box, close up the box, hand them over to Michael. And then what happens? He gives me back and he opens it up and says, this is what it's transformed to. Just like for me, I didn't get the table I truly wanted today 
but I got the table I needed and I got what I was, should have. And so now I'm going to have to transform it. And I just saw when I did that, because I put the table scenario that I was in, um, I put that in the box and he gave it back to me and he showed me what it could be. So and that, so hey. that, that, that let the angels, let the beings like Archangel Michael, it would choose to stand behind any bus driver to protect them and put out a sword saying, nope, nope. And, and those, she, the windshields on those buses, they're picking up everything that is driving by too. So they got to remember to put a shield on their windshields. It's true. That's true. Energetic shields. Because you're seeing so much in cars going by you. You're seeing people yelling at each other. You're seeing um, smiling people. You know, you're seeing all these different things. But it's them driving by, not yours. You get to see a form of life that you haven't ever seen before. And, mm -hmm. and most people don't. It's uh it's a it's it really is a remarkable journey to do to do that job and to do it well and to understand it. So it's it's yeah, but it's fun. It, at least it used to be. Um, and it's and not I know that a lot now. of bus drivers they go through a harder part and an easier part, and then they go back down into a harder part. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. That happens mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so so well, the breath yeah. in and the breath out. <laughs> Is there anything since we've, we've our time has expired? Yeah, it has expired. I just want everybody to know that no matter who you are, what you're doing, that this is a learning process. So please be observant of yourself and just understand what is yours and what isn't yours. I'm free from being carrying other people. And so just know that this is a greater time for us to make those choices because many of us who are stuck in homes with loved ones navigating through things, if once we learn those boundaries, usually things kind of um, shift a little bit and they, uh, they just become more graceful with our scenarios. And so with that, just know that you're loved and it doesn't matter what you believe in, that you do have angels, you do have love beings, guides, ascended masters that are going to help you through a process of life. And when you can walk that and know that, it's amazing how much you don't feel alone. So when a bird flies towards you, Google what it means. Duck. If a animal walks in front of you, even your own cat, See what cat means, you know, see what these animals in this universe is trying to show you so that you can um, understand what's going on. Kind of like for me, I saw a beetle and he was a weird looking beetle, but he had a great armor, sh armor ship on him, oh, you know, with yeah. big antennas. So he was seeing what was out there at the same time. He was very well protected and he was kind of a reddish color. Um, he would. And, and I've seen these before, but I know that they're not very common. And red is about, you know, that fiery, you know, passionate. It's also about new beginnings. So red is that first color. It's that passion, that fire to get going. Um, that it was like, oh, boundaries. Check out there to see what's going on. And he was standing on a wall. So it's like, oh, start moving forward up. You know, but yet having my boundaries. Got it. By the way, that's that's Natasha Venter over there, and she's a she's a wonderful soul. And I hope that you will take the time to go to Angelic Clarifications with an S, and uh, and uh, drop her a line and and talk to her. Other than that, you can be here on Wednesdays at four o'clock Pacific, and you can have the opportunity to talk to her and to really engage with her. What's going on with you? She really is. Uh, she's tired of talking to me anyway. So she. <laughs> We need her to talk to you. <laughs> Never tired of talking to you, Kevin. But yet at the same time, it is nice to, because I know that if someone's sitting there stewing about a problem, I can guarantee that there's going to be people out there that have the exact same problem that you do. And if we can work through yours with grace of knowing that you are on, um, on 
a big picture here of YouTube, but yet that's where I understand confidentiality that we would only go so far that that whatever is so said to help you can help someone else. There's no mistakes about getting that feeling to call in or make a, uh, make a comment. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Did we get any comments today? No, nope, we didn't, but that's okay. That's a, that's perfectly fine. I understand that this is a process and I'm grateful for this process because it's all a gift. Speaking of which, are you going to be on Martha's show? Oh, I am. I think it's the Sunday that I am. I haven't emailed her yet. I was going to do that tonight when I had time. So, yes, I am on usually the third Wednesdays on KK 1150 KKNW. And I will be there this this Sunday from 9 a.m. to uh, to 12 p.m. Pacific time. And you can go to uh, K, uh, 1150 KKNW.com and go to listen live and you can listen to what we talk about and then we usually talk about animal communication and sometimes people call in with a personal problem and if you go to marthanorwalk.com you can also listen live but you can do it anywhere in the world so um it, because it streams live on the internet so mm -hmm. um that way you can call in from just about any darn place you'd like and talk to natasha which would be great fun for you so. yeah and usually i'm on her show the third sunday of each month right right anything else you'd like to add my dear just remember everyone is loved even no if matter you don't who think you, you, are, are. you are yes absolutely so with that uh, my name is kevin mcdonald go to my independence report and you'll find out lots of stuff that's there too so we have fun with it and i hope that you'll take care of yourself and be kind to one another because as i say in a minute hey and thanks for listening to this episode all the way to the end hey pretty cool hey don't forget to follow us so you can receive regular updates and new posts and remember take care of each other because each other is all we've got see you next time a mind of energy. Bye now. Bye bye.